report has been published. 5,000 miles of railway and over 2,000 stations are to be closed. For all of us, some of those 2,000 names have a special meaning. Tonight, we record a few of them. They're closing the stations with beautiful names. Appledore and Chasewater and Saffron Wall. The plan is drastic enough to make you very unpopular in some quarters. What is your reaction to this? I don't think that it makes me unpopular among thinking people because all we're doing is to display the uh, facts of the situation and make proposals for correcting things that are clearly wrong. But in any case, the ultimate uh, choice still rests with the people of the country through the government of the day. Say railway, think of beaching. But what do names like the Countess, Ken Nelson, Bob Harris and Laurie Brooks signify? Well, they're all involved in a railway at Welshpool, a railway which is actually reopening. The rebirth of this narrow gauge line in mid Wales brings a gleam of optimism into the ominous picture outlined by the beaching plan. Thanks to the local light railway preservation company, a new passenger service will be operating at weekends. If the beaching axe falls, this will be the only steam service left in an area sadly short of trains. If this survey is implemented, how much do you expect to save in a year? Uh, this is a question to which I can only give a, a very broad answer, a, a, a general indication, because we haven't yet planned these changes in detail, and we shall only make the assessments of financial savings when we do that. But uh, for the purpose of giving a broad indication, uh, 50 to 100 million pounds a year. Are you not afraid that publishing this report now will add further to the dismay of the railwaymen? No, I don't think it will. Um, railwaymen are realistic people, and they know that the railways have got to be modified to fit them for the traffic requirements of the future. Soon the beaching axe will fall, closing the section between Hayward Heath and Horsted Cay. Nevertheless, the Victorians would certainly approve of our efforts to preserve what remains of their pioneering spirit. The revolution has meant the overthrow of the giants of steam, and to commemorate them, the Clun Castle has just made a sentimental journey from Paddington. Steam trains have a fascination that may never be challenged by any other form of transport, and this is the last of the famous castle class. They were so successful they virtually ran the western region for nearly 40 years. to diesel power has replaced over 3,000 steam locomotives between London and the West. Clun Castle's farewell journey to Cheltenham marks the end of an era begun 127 years ago. The resurrection of a king. This 104-ton locomotive, most famous and largest of all the giants on the Great Western, King George V. Railway enthusiasts pull her out of her mausoleum at Swindon before she leaves to be restored to her original regal splendor. She's being lent to a Herefordshire cider company who will have her restored and put on public exhibition. Ironically, this reprieve was within days of the retirement of all steam trains on British rail. Just one engine for whom the bell does not toll. The Coronation Scott, Glasgow bound on a record run of 114 miles an hour. But that is 1937. Now, in this anniversary year of 1975, when steam locomotion is 150 years old, these splendid old giants are already a dream. What massive majesty these old warriors had, and still have. But sadly, the famous old names mean little to a younger generation. Now, the selected remnants of Britain's iron horses are on their way to the York Museum. These are the lucky ones. For them, immortality. From now on, they can stand and dream of the grand old days of fire and speed. But others are not so fortunate. 
The end of the line is the scrapyard, where they die the slow, rusting death of the discarded, the unwanted. Prince Philip is always ready to try his hand at anything, so why not a steam train? 